I was in Paris at COP21. I met Nigel from the Solomon Islands. Nigel's island was being swamped by the ocean. He was losing his home. And for me, that made the issue very real. Sometimes we have to have these personal encounters for these issues to become real. And, and at that time, it, it did become real. And it became real when I came back and I read about Louisiana and the island that we're losing there and our own refugees there. These people are our brothers and sisters. And, and we need to have compassion for them. And I know all of you here do have deep compassion uh, for them. Th this, this is real, and you all know this is real. I want to just tell you my, my own story. You heard Alicia say that I, I was pro-fracking, and so I ran a manufacturing plant. I was a metal manufacturer, and I came up with a brilliant idea about 10 years ago of converting from oil, one fossil fuel, to the other fossil fuel, gas. <laughs> I bought into the propaganda. And it was easy to buy into that propaganda because you looked at that little blue flame and there were no emissions. The Sierra Club bought into that propaganda. Lots of people bought into that propaganda. And then we began the film, Groundswell Rising, and, and I woke up. I did the research. And you can't do the research and remain pro -fracking. It's impossible to do the research and remain pro fracking But what this means for me personally is that I spent over $200,000 10 years ago, near $300,000 in today's dollars, on fossil fuels. I don't have that money to spend on alternative fuels now. I'm a microcosm. This is what is happening on the planet. They're building export facilities. They're building pipelines. Once they build those things, they don't have the money to spend on alternative fuels. So it's not a question of uh, whether we should or should. We, we can't. It's got to stay in the ground, and we have to stop the infrastructure. We've got to stop the infrastructure. One of the things, by the way, I, I came back from Paris with a very, very heightened sense of urgency about the climate crisis. I mean, my sense of urgency before Paris was about here, and when I came back, it was, you know, maybe at the ceiling. And so I still hear us using the word climate change. I think about using the word climate crisis because isn't, isn't, that, isn't that really what it is? I mean, wouldn't that help wake us up if we began to use the, the word climate crisis? I, one of the things that, that I wonder about, what is it going to take to wake this nation up? We haven't awakened yet. I think there's a deficiency of empathy in our nation. There's a deficiency of empathy. And I think for some people, not in this room, I don't believe in this room, but for some people, I, some politicians, they're going to have to have the water literally lapping at their toes before they wake up. I don't have a solution to that, but that's, that is the truth of what we're, that's the consciousness that we're dealing with. And this is the consciousness that we see reflected in the Republican Party platform that is recommending that we withdraw from the Paris Accord. And, and th that consciousness is, uh, uh, was reflected in Copenhagen, where we were booed in 2007. Uh, because of our uh, inability to recognize that there really was a climate crisis going on. And this, the, 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 this platform, the Republican platform, uh, just is a furtherance of the fossil holic, fossil holic consciousness that is going to just lead us to a dead end. And we, if we contrast that with the, with the Democratic platform, which states, just as America's greatest generation led the effort to defeat the Axis powers during World War II, so must our generation now lead a World War II type national mobilization to save civilization from catastrophic consequences. Recently, 
I met a, a young man that's going to MIT, first year in MIT. So I said to him, I said, don't make my smartphone smarter. Don't make my computer faster. Fix the climate crisis. 